I find Janet McKenzie's works, The Stations of the Cross, and I'm examining number 13, compelling on multiple levels. My first personal reaction was quite simply one of, one of joy. I really appreciate seeing images of Christ and of Mary which don't fit the Western sort of stereotypical mold, the blue-eyed, blonde-haired Jesus and Mary, which never actually existed in history. I appreciate that there's a sense of diversity about the picture that reminds us that Christ and Mary are images given to the world, not to one particular subset of Christianity or of any faith. The other thing that struck me right away was the lack of injury to the body of Jesus. He is lying in her arms very calmly, could very well be asleep. In fact, so could Mary. Both of them have their eyes closed, and it's rather a peaceful scene, much more peaceful than, than it is full of grief. As I looked at the, the picture, it's one of those instances where an object is not merely what it seems on the surface, but as you continue to look at it, you discover more and more about it. As I thought about what that particular picture meant and the way that Mackenzie painted it, I noticed that because of the way that they were portrayed with their eyes closed, and both very peaceful, they could also be praying as well as sleeping, which makes one wonder what the deeper message is there. Is Mary, in a sense, praying to her own son? Is she praying for him? Is Jesus, in some sense, praying, whether he is physically alive or not at that moment that's portrayed in the picture? I think it brings to mind several compelling questions for us to answer. You know, what can we know about her son? And I think the beauty of this kind of artwork is that it reminds us that as much as we may think we know, there's always more to learn. There's always more to discover. It's one of the strengths of the work, I think, of that entire series, is that it reminds us there is more. We again, sometimes get so comfortable, I believe, in, in the West, maybe particularly especially, with our own pat images of what Jesus is and who he was and what he might have said. And yet, as we continue to grow in our knowledge, not only historically, but theologically, we come to understand that there's more to the picture, if you will, than has first met the eye. One has to consider, as Mary holds her son there, what was she feeling at that moment? Typically we have, we have tears, and we have grief, and we have sorrow, and we have all of those things that, that transmit the idea of tragedy. Yet in this picture, we have a very different viewpoint. Is this about acceptance? Is it about peaceful acceptance of what has happened? Is it about knowing that things will work out? Did Mary have some knowledge that her son wasn't done, that there was more to the story? Or was, did she simply trust that even though she didn't know what the plan might be, that there was in fact a plan? I think those questions can, can be relevant for all of us from a theological point, point of view. From an artistic point of view, again, I really appreciate the fact that what we have here are two figures who don't fit some stereotypical mold. It reminds us that there is diversity in the world. Now, from a personal perspective, I find that very joyful in itself, because I believe that diversity is a hallmark of all creation, that there's beauty in that diversity. So I'm reminded as I see this woman with darker skin and full lips cradling this man with darker skin and, and the facial hair of, of someone of that time who would have been a good and observant Jew, that there are many ways of seeing our past as well as our theology. There is, I think, a sense that if something's not historically accurate, that it is not accurate. When in fact, when we look at the Stations of the Cross, we're talking about not history 101, but sacred history. And so what it portrays gives a great deal of leeway. And I think McKinsey capitalizes on that leeway by presenting to us figures and characters that don't fit a particular mold, but that are designed, in fact, to make us think. And that, I think, is the great gift of McKinsey's work, is it gives us something to consider, to ponder, that's beyond the surface of, of those things that we've talked about in the past, or read in the past, or even thought in the past. It gives us a way to open up new worlds within ourselves, within our communities, and hopefully in the world itself, so that we can understand that there are many, many ways to see the same thing, and that they can be right, even though they're different. I really like this particular piece because it, it causes me 
to sit and ponder not only what the artist is trying to do, not only what Mackenzie's trying to convey, but what can I take away from that in a personal sense. The work is one of beauty, it challenges, it is all of the things that good art should do. And when we allow ourselves to simply ponder that, to simply delve into what is this picture, I think we come away richer, not only in terms of what our own personal thoughts may be about our own faith, but understanding, I think, in a deeper way what art can contribute to history and what art can contribute to the world today as we need so desperately to spur conversations that require the critical thinking that is so often lacking. It's not something that deserves to be passed over as you would when you're walking through a hallway and you see a picture on the wall. It deserves the time that it takes to sit and really think about what was the artist portraying? What was her intent? And what can I take away from that work that might deepen my own understanding, not only of my history, but of my faith? And that, I think, is the great strength of that work.